Apple cider vinegar is a heavyweight in the health hack world. One claim is that apple cider vinegar can blunt the blood glucose response to food. Frequent glucose spikes drive inflammation, over time increasing risk of chronic conditions like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So tweaks that dampen glucose spikes matter for metabolic health. I was curious about this claim, so I ran some N of 1 experiments and was pretty surprised by the results. Does apple cider vinegar lower your blood glucose response? And should you incorporate it into your daily routine? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Apple cider vinegar, or ACV for short, is fermented apple juice in which yeast and bacteria have converted the sugars into acetic acid. It's thought that acetic acid is the special sauce that can suppress glucose spikes from carb-containing foods. To investigate the impact of ACV on my glycemic responses, I designed two experiments, the salad experiment and the bagel experiment. I'm using a continuous glucose monitor paired with the Levels app to measure how my glucose levels are changing. This teeny tiny filament is inserted under my skin and measures the glucose concentration every five minutes in my interstitial fluid, basically the watery fluid surrounding my cells, which is a good proxy for my blood glucose. To reduce other factors that can affect my glucose response, I made sure that I didn't eat or have any physical activity for at least three hours before or after my experiment meals. When reading up on published studies, most investigated drinking diluted ACV immediately before meals of white bread or mashed potatoes. I don't want a mashed potato sandwich. So I wanted to see if ACV impacted my response to foods that I regularly eat. Hence the salad experiment. Each day I'll eat the same nourishable salad for lunch and will vary whether I incorporate some form of ACV into the meal. Day one of my experiment is my control a salad with no ACV, a bed of mixed greens topped with whole grain kamut, cucumber, cherry tomatoes, black beans, and guacamole with an olive oil lemon juice dressing. It has a good mix of carbs, protein, and healthy fats with a whopping 20 grams of fiber. Here's my data in the Levels app with time along the x-axis and glucose level along the y-axis. I ate my meal here, then we see a pretty typical glucose rise to a peak after about an hour, then it starts to decrease. Levels calculates a zone score from 1 to 10 which reflects your glycemic response for 2 hours after a meal, with 10 being the best. Three parameters contribute to your zone score. Your glucose peak, where a higher spike is worse, your glucose rise from baseline, where smaller is better, and your time to recovery, where shorter is better. I thought this salad was very healthy, but my response yielded a pretty poor zone score of two. Definitely room for improvement. I noticed though that my glucose levels hadn't returned to baseline two hours after I started my meal, which I think is because I'm a super slow eater. It took me about 25 minutes to finish my salad, so I graphed my glucose levels for the full three hours after my meal to capture the full response. Day two of my experiment, and first I'm drinking four teaspoons of ACV in four ounces of water, waiting five minutes, then eating the same salad. I chose this amount because it was the typical dose of ACV in the research studies. Did the ACV drink blunt my glucose response? Using this compare tool in the Levels app, we see the green line is my control salad and the white line is my ACV then salad. We can see that the glucose rise is much lower and more gradual with ACV, earning a better zone score of 6. Looking out a full 3 hours, we see the ACV plus salad in red has a small and subtle rise in glucose compared to the control salad in blue. Based on this data, it does seem like the ACV attenuated my glycemic response in a really good way. So what's going on here? Why would ACV blunt my glucose response? One theory is that ACV may inhibit enzymes required to break down carbs from my meal. The acidity is thought to inactivate a saliva enzyme that jumpstarts starch digestion in the mouth. Cell culture studies have shown that acetic acid suppresses the intestinal cell enzymes that break down carbs into their individual building blocks. Together, these would slow down how quickly carbs can be absorbed as glucose into the blood. 
Other studies demonstrate that ACV slows down how quickly food is released from the stomach into the intestine, which also slows down carb digestion. Several human studies have suggested that consuming ACV with a meal increases insulin sensitivity, so that glucose is taken out of the blood by tissues more quickly. All these mechanisms may be working together to yield this slow and stable glucose response to my salad. I didn't really love the flavor of my diluted ACV drink, but I do like an ACV dressing. So I also tested swapping the lemon juice with ACV in my vinaigrette. My ACV dress salad earned a pretty low zone score of 3, and it yielded a very similar spike pattern in yellow as the control salad in blue. Seems like an ACV salad dressing doesn't blunt the glycemic response. I wonder if this is because the dose of ACV is spread out over the entire eating period, rather than having the full dose immediately before the meal. ACV gummies are also very popular. I felt a bit conflicted about how many gummies to eat for my experiment. I wanted to have the same dose of ACV as 4 teaspoons of vinegar, which works out to 20 grams. Each gummy has only a half a gram of ACV, so an equivalent dose would be 40 gummies. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. This goalie nutrition bottle suggests a dose of two gummies, so that's what I ate before my salad. Well, the ACV gummies yielded the worst zone score possible of one. Compared to the control salad in blue, the gummies in green had a higher and more rapid glucose spike. This data supports that the ACV gummies worsened my glycemic response to the salad. Not only do I think the dose of ACV was too small to have any effect, each gummy contains a gram of added sugar. This seems to be pretty common across ACV gummies on the market, and a pretty counterintuitive way to dampen glucose spikes. Save your money and skip those gummies. Looking at all the salad data together, drinking ACV in water before my meal was the only effective tweak to blunt my glucose response. ACV in salad dressing didn't make a difference, and those ACV gummies made it worse. So should you start drinking ACV before every meal? Well, things got a bit murky with the bagel experiment. Here, my goal was to replicate a published study to see if I got the same results. Researchers had participants eat a plain bagel with butter and a glass of orange juice with or without that same ACV drink that I used in my salad study. They found that ACV significantly blunted the glucose response in people who were insulin resistant, and a similar trend in people who were insulin sensitive. I'm pretty insulin sensitive, so I was expecting at least a bit of a dampened glycemic response. But what I found was the opposite. The bagel and OJ by themselves caused a pretty big spike and a terrible zone score of 1. But compared to the ACV data in white, we see the ACV yielded a way bigger spike that stayed high for longer. I found it pretty perplexing, so I decided to repeat the experiment. I only eat this many refined carbs for science. Here we see the bagel alone in green and the bagel with ACV in white. The early part of the response is pretty similar, but then the ACV curve has this second spike that is even higher than the first. This would be exposing my cells to higher glucose levels for longer, which is more inflammatory and just bad news bears. My data is pretty different from this published study, and it turns out that the data is a bit mixed across other studies too. ACV didn't blunt my glucose response in the bagel challenge, and actually seemed to make it worse. So does ACV improve glycemic responses? Considering both the salad and bagel experiments together, I give it a solid… maybe? Drinking ACV before my salad yielded that desirable gradual low rise, but it was utterly ineffective and maybe even counterproductive in the high carb bagel challenge. Why were my results different from published studies? It's possible that research studies controlled for more variables than I did, like having an identical meal the night before or performing all the experiments at the exact same time. But frankly, real life is variable. 
since the ACV effect was so inconsistent, I wouldn't deem it a worthwhile habit to get into for controlling glucose levels. Plus, there are many other tweaks, like mini bursts of exercise around meals, or pairing carbs with protein, that consistently blunt those glycemic responses. If you like the flavor of ACV and enjoy incorporating it into your recipes, then go for it. But it probably won't have a major impact on your metabolism. And those ACV gummies? Save your money and skip them. That's what science tastes like. A big thank you to Levels for sponsoring this video so that I could collect this super insightful data. If you want to explore your own personalized glycemic responses, follow my link in the video description to the Levels Metabolic Health Program. Using Levels empowered me to optimize habits that are now part of my daily routine. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.